Hi everyone, this is Kenneth Chu. Welcome to episode 27 of Mother Industrialist Live Show where we talk about entrepreneurship, parenting and life. And in this episode, we are going to talk about birth story in Singapore. And today I have this um, really awesome guest and she's someone that I've um, met during a workshop and uh, she's a founder of um, Childbirth Odyssey. She's also a certified hypnobirthing childbirth educator. She's also a certified birth doula. She's also an infant massage instructor. She's a mother of two boys. And in two, these two boys, her second boy was birthed uh, under hypnobirth, under natural birth. And she's also a, a, a mom that had been through hypnobirthing. And without further ado, let us welcome Yen! So Yen, before we kickstart the show, um, there's a tradition in, uh, in the show is uh, every guest get to post a question of the day out to the audience and also to the next guest. So are you ready with the question of the day being posted by the previous guest before we kickstart the show? I believe that childbirth brings family together. When they have a good understanding of what truly a childbirth process is like, how to welcome their baby into this world in a very joyful, safe and a healthy manner. That if a woman is properly prepared and she's being supported and that she feels safe, secure and comfortable and she'll be able to do her job better and that husband will understand more what she will go through in this process and they work together to welcome the baby in a very joyful manner. If the woman can enjoy their labor and birth, I really believe that the baby will enjoy coming into this world and birth is not a suffering. And birth can be a beautiful experience and that's the day that a couple welcome their baby into this world and that that's the day they get to meet the baby for the first time think about it how would you like to welcome your baby and I will shape who they are and I also have a vision that every baby should come into this world whole and complete without birth trauma without birth injuries and then without birth def defect to begin their life with and that will give the family a harmonious beginning in life and i strongly believe in that i am gong chun yen and i'm a birth worker so let's welcome yen hi yen hi hello hi Kenneth. Hi, how are you i'm good yeah good, what a wonderful day yeah, thanks for uh, thank, thanks for making time and come um and and be uh coming onto my show. I'm really really excited and to have you on onto the show. So uh, before we start, so um maybe you can do a short introduction about yourself. What were you um doing prior to what you are doing currently, your business, and your maybe your background and where are you from? Okay, um okay prior to what I do, I I I did something. Totally unrelated to what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I got a degree in travel and tourism. So I was in the travel industry for, for a few years and I moved on to um, admin doing more administrative stuff. Yeah. So after I birthed my first child and that's when I kind of resigned and take care of my son. So and then I had. I, um, <laughs> had the opportunity to get involved with um, natural health, learn more about the holistic approach to living. Mm. Um, I guess it's a life skill that I learned um, about health that bring me to this uh, birth industry. Yeah. So that was my kind of background. Okay. So I, I know that um, you are a mother of two boys. So uh, from, from what I know from you, you were sharing it that with me that uh, your first boy was born um in the in, in the hospital in the normal what we call the what uh, how how do how do we put it and your second boy it's was by hypnobirth sorry it's a typical um hospital birth it, mm. it was very much um managed from the mm. beginning of my labor mm -mm. to the end so that was what i had with my first one and that was like uh 10 uh about 12 years ago mm. yeah so when I when I, I was preparing for my pregnancy with my second one, mm. I decided that I wanted a healthy child. 
Yeah, which, you know, I didn't see that in my first son, although I breastfeed him for about um, 19 months. Mm. So I think that the, the, um, <clears throat> the starting point was that it, with the intention to have a healthy child that brought me into wanting uh, a total drug-free mm. birth experience. And I mm. knew about water birth at that time, but I wasn't sure as a second time mom if I could <laughs> do it <laughs> without drugs. Yep. Um, I was more scared than anybody else. Mm -mm. So then I Google search and found out about hypnobirthing. Mm. Yeah, so I did a course when I was like 32 weeks and I, I completed it 37 weeks. Mm. And 39 weeks, I, I birthed my son. Um, it, it's in a hospital um, with a water birth experience. Mm. And it makes it a lot more a lot easier to birth my baby, my baby. Mm. But what I really get from from this program was that it was an empowering birth experience. And mm. to me, that was healing because the second time around, I took charge. Wow. So, so that, that also brings us to today's topic, which is um, mm. birth story in Singapore. Because recently, we have just did a workshop um, talking about microbirth and hypnobirth. And uh, right. I, I, I realized that it's, it's pretty interesting. And how we met is also very interesting. Uh, we met each other in, in a healing workshop and... and uh, and we were like I was sharing about my book and you were sharing about hypnobirth and it got caught my attention and that's where we went into even deeper uh, went into deeper discussion conversation mm -hmm. and and um, it got me intrigued to want to find out more about hypnobirth and that's where uh, I invited you to come for, uh, for for my workshop and also to talk to to the parents to the especially the pregnant uh, mothers so uh, to share uh, and, and share that different types of uh, birthing method, especially in right. Singapore. Mm. And it, it, got, it caught my attention that, in fact, uh, after mingling with, with the group, uh, I, I guess we, I realized that there's a lot of parents that they only know of one method of child birthing, like, like the cesarean birth. And, and it's interesting when, when you brought out a, a lot of different birthing methods, uh, what, uh, and whatever is available in Singapore, it yeah. got me really intrigued. So maybe you can bring us through that. Um, what is the different type of birth, uh, birth method or birthing that is available in Singapore? And um, why is that? Uh, and maybe you can just share on the different type of birth then before we move on into uh, going deep into different methods. Okay, right. Um, what type of birth? In general, people are aware of what they thought was natural birth. Mm. Um, so it means that it's vaginal birth. Mm. Yeah, so the baby goes through the birth path, right? Mm. Um, sometimes this birth can be more medicalized birth mm. whereby it was uh, induced. Mm. So then they, they will usually have um, a series of um, procedure mm. afterwards to them. And um, it, it may end up with a a cesarean, but a uh, majority would have a vaginal birth. Mm. So this kind of birth is what we call typical hospital birth. Um, in our definition, it's not considered natural birth. Yeah. Mm. So, and another one will be natural birth. Um, our definition is that in general is um, less medicalized. Mm -hmm. So the mother is able to have the onset of labor naturally. And that is very minimal medical intervention. So it's that's what we consider um, as natural birth. So natural birth can mm. be land birth mm. or water birth. So what the mother can give okay. water birth. Mm. Something yes. that is in interesting is what is the definition of land birth? It, it it's like seems to be a very new term. Is it a new term or what? What, what is it exactly like land birth? So we we call land birth just to differentiate whether it's it's a water birth or a dry birth, or we can mm. call that a dry birth. So um, that that's usually what's the normally uh, the normal hospital setting. So just mm. give birth, mm. not giving birth in the water. So that's a land birth. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So we call that land birth or dry birth, vaginal okay. birth. You name. So just how you you did uh, point out uh, like take reference from we think that um this is like natural birth. So when you talk about we, who are you referring to? You... Okay, we we refer to birth workers in general. Ah, okay. 
So who are birth workers? Birth workers are like us, natural childbirth, mm. uh, educators, mm. uh, birth doulas, mm -mm. Um, midwives. Mm -mm. So, uh, or yeah, usually <laughs> that's what we consider we. Okay. Yeah. So are uh, like birth educators or you were, you were saying? Okay. Yeah. Childbirth educators. So at, at least for the audience, they, um, especially for first time mother, they may be it, um maybe thinking what uh, what is like we and and what is you are taking reference mm. from and why yeah. does uh, this group of people think Good. that this is uh, the definition of natural birth to them so at least um I, i'm just clearing the air so that everybody get uh is on the same page because um because if you have been really experienced in in the industry so maybe there was some terms that maybe um uh, like for me layman I, I need to know and I really to understand. And thanks for thanks for uh referring um uh, explaining on that. And also um I realized that during the workshop itself um uh, we 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 have this very um I I guess this question or this myth that why is it so common nowadays especially in Singapore to give birth by the cesarean way. It seems like it's um it's being promoting or it's like the only way or it's like a, a, a way that most people would go by it because it, it's like every, every time we, we maybe you ask a friend ah, uh, do you go by natural birth they always have this myth that natural birth is painful you need to yell and scream whereas uh, cesarean seems to be the safest way be like the fast way and stuff like that why is there an increase in in uh, cesarean where um, like, like for me when I think back uh, in, in the olden days or even my parents my mom, my grandmother, like cesarean is not a common thing to them. Like natural birth is to them, to them is so common. But nowadays, why is there a, in, such an increase in cesarean birth? Uh, and, and and maybe you have a, a answer to it, or maybe from from your uh, experience, maybe you can share with us why is that the the difference between um um back in the days or twenty thirty years ago compared to the current. Okay, um. That's a very good question. Uh, okay, it's not that um, it's cesarean is not like considered as majority here. Mm. Yeah, but in Singapore, it's more than one third of the births happen to be a cesarean birth, mm. right? So, well, one of the reason is that um, it could also be because of the the birth is being um, medicalized, mm. right? And sometimes induction is offered before. Um, the mom's body is ready. Mm -hmm. So when that is the case, then probably after a certain hours, so-called, whether she's in labor or not in labor, mm. yep. um, after you wait for so long, mm. then that can be a felt induction. Mm. Then uh, a cesarean birth is offered. Mm. Okay. Um, another thing is that there are certain type of um, baby's position or certain type of or certain conditions such as um breech baby mm. yeah so the baby if the baby is in a breech position mm -hmm. um that would be one of the options that mm. the doctor probably would suggest or sometimes uh, the doctor has only that one option for, for mm. so that that was what the doctor suggests then they wouldn't know the other option which is uh done a uh, breech birth so that's mm. mean that the mother can still of this baby even mm. though this baby um will come out like the buttock first or the leg come out first okay yeah so, that is an mm. uh, that is really an option here it's still an option here in singapore but um probably majority majority of the doctors don't really do a uh, vagina bridge birth mm. so what about twins mm. <laughs> so if you have twins um the likelihood is that it will be also um a cesarean birth Mm. All right. Mm. Yeah. So some doctors will, will still do um vagina birth, right? Mm. Some doctors will uh looking at the the position of the two babies and mm. see if vagina birth is uh safer. Mm. So it really depends on the the comfort level of the doctor. And sometimes doctor just ask and offer mm. mom. So do you want a natural birth or you know do you want a cesarean birth? So cesarean birth becomes an option. 
So do, do you say that that um like like for my own experience, I have a nine year old daughter. So back then when my uh my wife was seeing the the doctor, the gynae, the gynae did ask like like in the beginning, at very beginning when we start. So do, would you want to have a cesarean birth or want a natural birth? Um, but hearing from you and also attending your workshop, I understand that cesarean birth uh seems to be only uh, occurs when there are condition, like when you, yeah. you were saying about the uh, the bridge position, and yeah. maybe you can explain that that um why is it an option? Is it shouldn't like natural birth be be the natural way, be be the best way, whatever stuff. So why is that like uh, doctors in the beginning, maybe in the first trimester, they are already offering that option? Shouldn't it be in under condition in case that there's any emergency or if there's any risk that uh, occurs during labor? That's where cesarean will come in. So maybe you can share more on that. Um, I don't think it is uh, normal to offer cesarean birth at the beginning mm. of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. it, it is the uh, it will be in a third trimester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's usually the case. Mm. Um, so you're talking about uh, if the baby is in a bridge position. Yes, maybe okay. you can explain on like the bridge position, especially for first time mothers or uh, for for um, uh, mothers to be, or even for those women who are watching the show mm. and uh, they are they are curious why is the bridge position. Maybe you can explain in maybe in more layman terms so that it's yeah. easier to understand. Yep. So, um, baby can be in any position throughout the whole pregnancy. Hmm. But by around, uh, sometime around 32 weeks, that's what the, usually the doctor would say. The 32 hmm. weeks, the baby will turn, supposed to turn head down because the head is the heaviest part hmm. of the body. Okay. But some babies will turn the head down a little bit later. Hmm. Um, so, we do have an option of uh, helping the baby to rotate, to, to hmm. turn head down. Okay. Uh, but sometimes this, this uh, option is being discussed even as early as 33 or 34 weeks of mm. pregnancy. Um, so if the if the mother thinks that uh, she wanted to have a, a vagina um, breech birth, mm. so there is a restart as the baby is coming out or being born, mm. the head is the last one that is coming out, correct? Ah. So the body can be out but the, the head may be dangling. So okay. they may they, it may cause some uh, lack of oxygen to the mm. baby mm. or it may be some injuries to the neck mm. it can be a bit risky okay. so though some doctors uh, understand that you know, it, it really depends on the, the um, confidence of the mother if she's mentally prepared mm. physically prepared and that if she engage uh, mm. an experienced doctor who is still comfortable doing uh, vagina bridge birth mm. and she should be good but of course, not all um, bridge position babies is considered safe. So one one of them that if like they cross legs like mm. that, like lotus, then uh, it's chances are then they cannot be born naturally. So if one leg is up and one leg is down, mm -hmm. um, so that would be also considered a little bit more more risky. So that would require the skill of the doctor to handle this in case if there is a need to do so. Mm. So if not in general, um, bridge position baby is usually like frank bridge, like about to come up first. Okay. Um, it, the labor wise is about the same as head down baby, vertex mm. baby, okay. not much different. So the, the mother will have to be more relaxed mm. and properly prepared and mm. learn to connect with the body and they will be able to do it naturally. Mm. Uh, so so correct me if I'm wrong. So the my understanding of the bridge position, meaning that uh at thirty two weeks onwards, if the baby is still not head facing down, that means going by the natural uh passage, yeah. uh then there will be what you call deem as the bridge position where the buttock may have to that means during label the buttock may have to uh be the first one that is passing through the passage. Am I right to say that? Uh no. Okay, mm. I, I wanted to correct this. Mm. Um so some doctors would think that by thirty two weeks the baby should turn head down. Mm. Yeah, that's what uh that's how they feel. But some babies will turn head down a little bit later and mm. we do have baby head down at thirty nine weeks mm -hmm. as well. So we, we can give them the space for, for the baby to turn head down. Mm -hmm. So uh, the option of uh Giving the given to the mother that cesarean mm. 
and you should have a cesarean birth at that point of time. 33, 34 mm. weeks is still too early. Oh, so okay. it should be an option um, given to the mother until, that's how we feel until about at least 37, 38 mm. weeks. Mm -mm. Yeah, because there is still a chance that the baby can turn head down at, okay. at that point. Okay. Yeah. So it is offered a little bit too early, but of mm. course it's still considered in the third trimester. Okay. Mm. So can I say that in the, the means regardless what position it is, cesarean doesn't matter when you when you when you're doing cesarean. And yeah, talking about the, the, the position, position. Of the baby, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean cesarean again can uh uh, in certain situations, like if the placenta is covered the cervix, then the mm. mother will, will not be able to have a vaginal oh. birth. That's uh, that's quite clear. So certain condition it's not possible. But if it's just a position of the baby, in general, it is safer. So some mm. some position is a little bit more risky in terms of breach. Mm. If it's like um one leg up, one leg down, so mm. they may get stuck there in the birth path, mm. like the birth canal. Okay. Yeah. So if it's like totally cross legs, mm -mm. there's a good chance that we can flip this baby. Mm. But if it's totally cross legs, that means it's bigger, right? Mm. The space is bigger, then it, it will not fit the um the birth canal, the birth path we call mm. that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot for, for clearing that. And I believe that this part is going to be very medical, very in-depth. Mm. So uh Maybe like for those who are watching and listening, uh, you, you got confused. You don't, you don't kind of get it. For me, I'm kind of like still don't don't really kind of really get it. But <laughs> nevertheless, for for those who are in in the process or even those who are in the second or third trimester, you may be able to hear all this and you find the, all this familiar. So um um maybe we could we can move on to um like like I I always I also realized that during the workshop that we have with. Uh, like um, conversation, uh, having the conversation with uh, the parents, the mummies there, and um, we I understand that there's more and more mothers to like in the way when they they have any discussion, they start talking about ah, are you um are you going for ces uh, cesarean birth uh, because cesarean like if there's no pain uh is is safer and I can choose that that day and that time to really give birth. So why why is it like uh, a lot of mothers, uh, mothers to be or women, are so fearful of natural birth. Why is that so? Is that like a stigma that that everybody feel that is painful and all that? And I I believe that because and, and at the same time because you covered it in during the workshop, so maybe you can share with the audience out here why is that 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 belief and also that concept that oh uh, labor is is painful, uh natural birth is hard, is not everybody can do it that, that kind of stuff. Maybe you can share with us. Um, or what you have shared in during the workshop a bit of it. Right. Yeah. Um. For me, I feel that the biggest problem is that the woman, uh, they don't believe they can do it. They don't trust themselves. So there's a lot of self doubt, and because mm. we hear so much from friends, uh, sometimes even our own mothers share the mm. whole story. And that um, most of them feel that while giving birth naturally, it has to be painful. And it's like, it's not just painful, but excruciating pain. Mm. And they thought that, that the epidural is the way to go. Yeah. Um, so that's probably why in, they think that it's easier to have a cesarean birth because they know the time. So for mm. convenience sake, uh, they know the time and they know when baby is coming up. You mm. know, because nowadays women are busy. They are not, they are not... <laughs> <clears throat> Um, like me, you stay at home. They're not really stay at home mm. mom, but rather we are still like working mom. So it's so more today, conscious of the time. Yes, correct. So convenient to them is important. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and of course they don't understand uh, the impact of uh, what happened if they have a cesarean birth mm. as well. But I do have heard uh, some mother feel that it's for the baby's good. Mm. So because the baby does not um doesn't go through the labor it means mm. that the stress of labor so they okay. think that the baby wouldn't go through that kind of stress therefore mm. it is better for the baby mm. but yeah but but uh, in, in but the funny thing is if let why will the mother feel that it's stressful for the the baby or in fact is the stress is coming from the mummy themselves they are stressed about it that's why they felt that the yeah. stress will pass to the baby mm. is that is that so 
Yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because we hear, we probably hear a lot of all, um, if baby is in distress, you will have a cesarean. So they are thinking of, uh, from the baby's point of view, of course, mm. I don't want my baby to be in distress. But mm. what the mother feel is what the baby feel. If, if the mm. mother is really um, stressed, too stressed over her labor, mm-hmm. that kind of stress to pass on to the baby. Naturally, they should also be stressed. Mm. to prepare the baby to deal with the stress as they grow up. So mm. that kind of stress is uh, a healthy stress. Mm. Not too much. <laughs> Not too much, but um, a good amount of stress is really good. Cesarean birth baby do have stress, but it's a different type of stress. Mm. So they may, they may find it difficult to um, handle stress as they grow up. Yeah, mm. because they don't go through kind of um, natural stress that mm. uh, they go through a natural birth baby. So we are mm. talking about, actually we are comparing um, vagina birth baby mm. with elective cesarean. So elective cesarean is already scheduled. Okay. Cesarean, yeah. So for those who have gone through labor mm. and they may end up with a cesarean that's like more like an emergency cesarean, that is different because they mm. do get that kind of um, the, the hormones that their body when basically more ready, mm-hmm. uh, the lungs is uh, more fully developed, okay. so they can, they, they can, it will not have that, that much of an impact. Mm. And, and some, something that I realized that, um, like after the, the workshop that we have, right, I, I start thinking and start comparing, not, not really comparing, was trying to analyze what is the difference between, um, like childbirth. 30 years ago and current is because uh, as Singapore, as a, especially in Singapore, as we develop as a country from a third world country to a first world country, uh, there are more and more people are getting more educated, especially women. And, right. and the more uh, women are educated, they will hold careers, they will have their jobs and all that stuff. And, and this increases the stress, especially for women and, and especially for when, when women wanted to be uh, conceived. And uh, during the pregnancy period, they are still working, and most of the work is really stressful. And like what you mentioned, that if the mother is stressed, all the stress will go to the baby, and all this stress will also uh, equates to a uh, uh, unhealthy baby or a baby that is not really healthy. Can I can I can I put it in that way? That is the difference between um, mothers in the past, because when when women in the past they get married, most of them become like, become housewife. Unless they, they, they have they have certain education um uh, level that they will go out and work like teachers and stuff like that. But most of them, like my, my mom, she's a housewife. So mm. for her, uh I, recently I asked her like uh um uh, me and uh, uh, like uh, my two sisters and I are we born natural? She said, Yeah, why not? Kind of stuff. Like, to her to her like giving birth to three of us seems like like it's not a painful experience. And in fact she I would not say she enjoys. She's she's like, it's like giving birth is like that, but why is that so compared to now? Is it because of the environment, the lifestyle that we're in, and uh, and also the the roles that we are having, uh, especially for women in modern days? Yeah, cannot you nail it? You <laughs> know exactly what happened here. So in in the past, um, natural birth is is the norm. Mm. Everybody births just like that. You mm. wouldn't question it. And the environment, the nurses uh, also have seen normal birth. Mm. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Unless it, if there is any um, health condition or mm. if there is an emergency that maybe they will have a, a cesarean birth. But right now, because our lifestyle, women are more educated. But on top of that, you see our age. Um, our rich women who give birth the first time probably in mm. their thirties. Mm. Educated, yep. they are older as well. Yes. Yeah, and they hear too much. Educated <laughs> women sometimes um more fearful. Of course, mm. not not all of them. Yeah. Yeah. So when we are exposed to too much of the um, the negative uh, mm. perception about childbirth, they can yep. be quite afraid. And and you know our friends around us um often like to share mm. their birth experience. Like for yes. example, I have a I have a couple. They want. To have a natural birth, they knew that that's what they wanted to mm. do, so they engaged me as a birth doula. Yeah. So when she's so close to her 
um, at estimated birthday. She said that all her friends around her um, all give unsolicited advice. That's what I call it. <laughs> you know? uh, they say that epidural is a must. Mm. It's good, but it's, it's a must. You know? So that is that kind of negative impact can, can really affect her. So our role is to give them confidence. Our women mm. are supposed to be able to birth the baby naturally. It's not that the hip is too small for the mm. baby. Yep. It's not that the baby is too big because too big, <laughs> big babies is not that common. Mm. Yeah. Um, but nowadays our big is actually really not, not that big. It should still be considered um, a normal size baby. Mm. So it's really go back to the confidence of the mother. Yeah. If she really want a natural birth, mm. I always um, ask them you know, the difference between vagina birth and natural birth. So if mm. they understand this, they, they would know exactly you know, how, how to ask the correct questions to yes. the doctor. And, and you, you, you brought up one point and I, I felt that um, why, are, why are mothers or women more afraid to give birth? It's because um, it's no longer natural to them, they felt. And it became something that is very process, a, a processed. Like they need to know a lot of things, and childbirthing seems to be like a, a a big question mark to them, like a mystery to them, and there's a lot of like voices that you are saying that is coming to them, and I would say that the number one thing that um causes them to have all this is uncertainty, because when you have uncertainty, fears come comes in. So when fears comes in, all the anxiety, all the uncertain, all the distress is all coming to them and it's all affecting the pregnancy, even to, to the last, um, uh, to mm. the label, label period, the, the label time when they are in label. So I, I realized that it's a lot of uncertainty. Like, like women seems to have, when, when I, I, I feel that there's too many information now. As compared in the past, there wasn't any information. <laughs> uh, like, like our mom, our grandmothers, they are all, they knew that, this is the natural way. It's like, like, like childbirth should be like that. Should be natural. Right. There, there's no other alternative, or there's no like cesarean to them back then. So it's like it's their only way, and and there wasn't a lot of information because, uh, not like today in modern days. Uh, we have internet, we have technology, all all information is so uh accessible, and I would say that, uh, it's very hard for us today to die. Um. To, to sieve out all this, the right information, because information is all around, opinions are all around, it's yeah. all, all available with, with asking our good friend, Mr. Google, and ask him all kinds of stuff, and, and he may or may not give us the right information, which is o information overwhelming, mm -hmm. where compared to, to, to the past. And that's where, that's where um, I feel that it's, it's, it's really important to invite you on, on, on the show and to share, because coming from you being a certified human birthing, uh, childbirth educator, a birth doula, and also um, you really, um, um, in a way, big on, on, on natural birth. Right. And I, I felt that it's really important. Yeah. So, so in short, um, I, I, uh, I remember that you were saying that um, like childbirth should be very natural. And you share with us like, like about animals, like how animals give birth and stuff like that. So maybe you can you can share with us on, on that part and and why is it what I find it's very very intriguing on, on that part that you shared. Okay, yes. Um even for first time mother, they but right the body just know exactly what to do. The intelligence mm. of the body exactly know what to do, like how a woman can conceive, mm. how a woman can give birth. Right, you wouldn't think I'll oh, teach the animals give birth, of course. <laughs> they, they know exactly what to do. So the difference in uh, the ability probably um, is that there are animals that are very instinctive, mm. right? They are very much connect with the body. Mm. So they just have to feel the body mm. and they know exactly what to do. But we are intelligent human beings, <laughs> but we use so much of our left brain and sometimes mm. that, that gets in the way. Mm. Instead, we should connect with our body and mm. just feel it. If, they are, if women are not fearful, they are yeah. very much connect with their body. Mm. Just like, for example, I will say sometimes you, um, if you are relaxed, you will be able to just quiet the sneeze. Mm. Yeah, so you'll be able to get the burp out. Otherwise, you kind of <laughs> get stuck there. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. So it's this kind of thing that um, sometimes because 
we are so much in our head, it's too mm. stressful. Yeah. But we are we forgot to connect with this body. Yes. yes. Say that a natural birth, if a woman can uh, do it, mm. uh, and if they are a spiritual person, they can really take this opportunity to transform. Wow. They do. And, and that's that's really important. And and I believe that now because there's a lot of information that's all around, a lot of noises all around, and and I and and also. Uh, because you also uh in the in the workshop, uh, you also share about hypnobirthing and about uh hypnobirthing. It seems to be, uh, something that a lot of women, especially for those who who are yeah. really really stressed, they uh hypnobirthing will help them a lot, right? So maybe you can yeah. share a bit on hypnobirthing and and how does it help and and um how how they can benefit from hypnobirthing. Okay, yeah, uh, hypnobirthing. It's to me, um, it's a revolutionary. Uh, Chabok method. It's mm. really an art of birthing. So, uh, what is hypnobirthing? Hypnobirthing is a natural Chabok education enhanced with hypnosis. And mm. hypnosis, you think that is stage hypnosis? No, uh, all hypnosis is self hypnosis. Mm. Basically, it is a very deep, kind of deep relaxation technique where we connect with this body. Mm. Right? So, at a conscious re level, uh, the natural Chabok education education is to um, give women confidence to uh, give the parents an understanding of uh, what natural childbirth is mm. yeah so when they have a good understanding they uh, they will improve um, their confidence level mm. yeah when they uh, in this case then they will not be shaken by any kind of um, suggestions mm. like in, in uh, what we call intervention so with the techniques wise, it helps a lot because if the woman knows how to uh, breathe in mm. sync with the movement of the burning body and they are properly relaxed and that women are free of fear, she just allows this body to do what they're supposed to do. Mm. Because the ideal scenario is that they will just surrender, let go mm. of all the fear, surrender mm. to this burning body yeah, and we will be able to do it. Um, we also bring the husband to mm. together because it takes two to conceive. So <laughs> they should work as a team. And that will give um, parents a better birth experience. Mm. Whatever the outcome is, it will still be a teamwork. Yeah. Daddy will do his part, <laughs> mommy would, would uh, do her part, and baby mm. is her part as well. And I believe this, this gives the mother a lot of support, especially the woman, the wife, a lot of support. Rather than like, because I, I guess emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, women need to be felt being appreciated, yeah. especially, yeah. Oh, okay, my husband is with me during the whole label, uh, he's, he's comforting me and stuff. Like, I feel that emotionally they, they are able to, whereas if let's say they, they, the husband is not there to accompany them during that, that childbirth thing or label, and, yeah. and uh, they are not even um, able to go into that op uh, operating theater, uh, the, the mother may not feel that emotionally, I feel. It's not being supported, mm -hmm. and it could uh, maybe uh, there will be some after effect or repercussion after that because the, uh, especially after birth because the husband wasn't there to support. If let's say the husband is there to support, I I believe that emotionally they will feel much better, and it will give them a better um uh, like delivery experience giving birth. Yeah, um, men place a. A huge part in this <laughs> case of course the, if the woman is uh, doing very well laboring mm. mother um, can relax mm -mm. and allow the body to do the job and that this husband knows how to support her yes. it's not just be there for her mm. but also to comfort her mm. like you say, give emotional support yes. and know exactly what to do yep. to do so much but mm. just understand what she goes through and if he can support it, it will be a, a bonus. Yeah, wow. and that he also will have a good experience. Yes. <laughs> if a husband um seeing the wives to go through such like kind blah, of they, they are yelling yeah, and screaming. Pain, and to them they say, Well, we are not going to have a second child. I, I <laughs> wouldn't want my my wife to go through this. Ah. So it, it's a change of, of perception. Mm. If the woman is doing very well. Mm. But it will inspire the husband as well. Wow, this mm. is how birth is supposed to be. If wow. he can guide her through hypnosis, mm. they will have a magical experience. Wow. That's the feedback that I got from, wow. from husband. 
Yeah, in fact, you just you just enlightened me on on the part because recently, because of my book, I've been thinking that why aren't parents or couples having more children? And you really uh, nailed it by by saying the part of because the experience wasn't great, especially the first child. Uh, if let's say the husband, like there will be a fear of having the second one because wow, we, are we going to go through the same yelling process, the screaming process, the the bad experience, and and that I believe that that also contribute. To, to couples thinking whether they should have a second child. If let's say the first experience is good, definitely they will consider have a higher chance of them having a second child. So that also, you, you, you basically, today's uh, interview had helped me a lot in understanding all this. And, and, um, and I, I believe that there's a lot more about him, uh, hymnal birthing and you can share more. But um, we, we are also coming to uh, quite the end of the show. So maybe for those who are really interested in hymnal birthing, how do they uh, get connected with you okay they can go to my website www.childbirthodyssey.com mm. so childbirth c-h-i-l-d-b-i-r-t-h mm. o-d-y-s-s-e-y so mm. they, they can go to my website and find out a little bit more and just register or sign up from there and i'll mm. reply them mm, that's yeah. good that's good thank so, you uh, thanks a lot yen and for those who are watching and for those who are listening at the same time I will put uh, the links for you to connect with Yen uh, in the description or in the comment section so that you guys can connect with her to find out more about hymnal birthing and maybe to clear the myth about uh, natural birth and all that. So um, last but not least, um, that as a tradition, there's a, uh, every guest gets to post the question of the day out to the audience and also to the next guest. So uh, Yen, are you ready with your question of the day? Yep, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so give it to okay. us. <laughs> Okay, so uh, my question is, what do you want to get out of this childbirth experience for mm. yourself? Okay. What do you... Do you want to get out of this childbirth experience for yourself? What do you get out from this childbirth experience, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me just repeat again so that the audience, uh, they, 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 they can... Um, get the question right so yeah. um the question of the day uh, posted by yen is what do you want to get out from this childbirth experience yeah that's all right yes okay so this Thank question you. get to post out to out to the audience who are watching and uh, for those who are listening so um this will be posted i will uh, include this question of the day in the description or even in the comment section so that you guys uh, can post your answer to it and uh, Yen and I will be really, really happy, uh, be, be uh, o joy, uh, overjoyed to really see your answers to the question of the day. And this question of the day get to be posted out to the next guest. I'm really um, curious what will the next guest be, be sharing on this part and what, what will her answer be. So uh, thanks a lot, Yen. So any last advice for the mothers who are um, sitting on the fence, thinking whether they should pursue their passion or they should step into entrepreneurship? or even uh, opt for um, natural birth. So any last advice for them? Okay, I wouldn't say advice, but more like a, um, uh, probably find out a little bit about what you are passionate about. Mm. And if you are passionate about something, and just go for it. Mm. Yeah, manifest. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. Thanks a lot, Ian, for, uh, for this you, last advice. And thanks for your time for um, coming on. Uh, I know that you are rushing off to somewhere after this, uh, this show. And um, thanks a lot for making time. And so for those who are watching uh, it uh, live and for those who are watching replay and for even for those who are listening to this uh, in audio. So um, like, thanks for uh, being here and thanks for um, listening, watching. And uh, do stay tuned. And if you like what you, are, uh, what you have um, gained out from this um, show, do give us some likes, do give us some comments, uh, do share it with your friends, do tag your friends who are um, expecting uh, so that they can benefit from this um, episode. So uh, last but not least, Kenneth here signing off with Yen. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and I see you guys in the next episode. Thank you, Yen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you Bye -bye. for having me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.